Hello, welcome to Guten Tag. Uh, tonight we are going to be working on uh, the last of our side-to-side -side rails. Uh, these are the very top ones. So eventually what I'm going to do is this is going to get trimmed back. This top piece here is going to get trimmed back. Um, basically to a, to a single tenon, and then the top is going to sit down over that tenon. Uh, this is the one I've been most nervous about because it's, it's towards the end and I'm going to be cutting around that kind of stuff. Um, and so there's a tendency to, to blow out, more or less, to where it's not really uh, mortise and tenon. I don't know what to call it, but to where it's, you know, this is the top, it's it's open to the top. And maybe that is a tenon, who knows? Who knows? Uh, all right, so, so I have my, my lines marked both uh, side to side. Ooh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Shop dog Scarlet is letting me know that I have not given her a treat for the evening. Um, oh boy, oh boy, and I still have not gotten my uh, utility knife down here, so we'll just have to, we'll just have to improvise. So, so tonight, tonight's lesson, oh shush, it's going to be on uh, proper, um, proper chiseling of uh, the doggy treats. So what you do is you find the approximate center line and you give it like tap, 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 tip, tap. All right. So you just you just find the center line and just just chisel on down. And if it breaks out, ooh, shit. There you go piece that flew across the room will be yours. The rest will be for later. All right. Uh, no. There we go. All right. So, uh, let's see here. I have marked in pencil my, my, my cross lines, uh, top and bottom lines, and I have my center line. That's all I need because of my new found, and you can see this in an earlier episode, uh, my newfound method of drilling these out. So, oh, there it is. So what I do, and my apologies, I have, I have consumed the uh, devil's brew this evening. Um, so what I do is, I come in from the side like this so I can kind of see roughly Roughly where where I'm supposed to be at, top to bottom, and, I'm, and and if I'm off a little bit towards the the inside of the mortise, I I think that's okay. One thing I like to do uh, while well, I'm drilling these out, and I'm not doing it right now because I'm talking. I really can't multitask. Ah. Uh, I like to count how many revolutions it takes. So I know this is about an inch. It's a little strong. And 17 revolutions will get me through. So I think, I think every revolution is approximately a 16th of an inch. Now where that comes in handy is when you are, again, see I'm coming from the side, I find my center line, and I line up roughly the edge of my bit with the uh, with where I want it to be, so that way when I bring it up here, I know I'm not going to go at least past where I want to be. If I'm a little bit towards the middle of the mortise, that's okay. That's okay. So, um, so if I know that every revolution is a sixteenth of an inch, and it seems fairly consistent, um, Then times to where maybe I don't want to break out, maybe you know I don't need exactness, uh, you know where I don't want my 
uh, my depth gauge, or you know maybe I'm doing a through a through hole to where I just I just want to make sure that my uh, my snell here right no no uh, not snell uh, snail uh, my lead screw here uh, is poking through. I can count and know that you know if I'm going through a uh, three quarter inch piece of wood, I know that at ten I need to start start feeling for it coming through on the other side. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. There we go. Um, so that way at least, at least I'm not blowing through. Because there's times to where, like if you want to do, let's say, a through tenon, and you're doing this, you want to, you want the, you want the screw to start poking out on the other side, but not go all the way through. So that way, once it pokes out on the other side, then you are, then you have your, then you have your point to then come around the other side and drill through. At least that's the theory. Ooh, let's see here. I really shouldn't. There we go. Five, six, seven, eight. Shemise, Shemizel, Hossum, Pepper Incorporated. We're gonna do it our way. Yes, our way. I don't even know that I've watched an entire episode of that show. Thelma and Louise? Thelma and Louise? Alright. Alright. Uh, mostly I know it from uh, Wayne's World. And I, you know, I, I've at least... Uh, I've at least seen the intro. Uh, several times. Growing up, my mom was... And my dad never watched TV. Well, take that back. My dad's a farmer. And uh, here in Iowa, we have uh, what's called market to market. To market. Uh, and so it's a, it's a half hour program. It airs on Friday, Friday evenings, right? Yeah, Friday evenings. Um, and just, they just talk about farm stuff. Uh, you know, what's going on with the markets, what's going on with... Uh, Yields and all that, all that fun stuff. Um, that growing up, at least, was pretty much the only show that my dad watched. Now that he's older, kind of slowed down. He watches a bit more television. It's still farm centric. Uh, he watches a lot of tractor auctions, antique antique tractor auctions. And then he curses out, curses out the, the guys who are buying the tractors, saying they spent too much, they're spending too much damn money, which translates into, I want to buy that, but I don't want to spend that much money on it. Part of me wishes I had, to, I had more of that mentality. But no, I had to be blessed with ADHD to where impulse takes over and when I want to buy something it's it's all consuming and I have to really fight against myself um, I've, I've all but given up on checking tool websites because all that is is I will find something on those websites that interests me And uh, I can't contain myself until I buy it. It kind of becomes all consuming. I'll find it. I'm going to take that back. So it'll either be to where I just, boom, buy it right now. Uh, or I realize I'm being impulsive. And then I go into hyper research mode 
to where I will find out absolutely everything, anything and everything about said tool. And a month later, I will buy like three of them because I'll realize like, oh, oh, that, that, that one model, that, that really interests me. And then I'll see them for sale. The next thing I know, I've spent like 200 bucks on three of the same thing. Kind of like, uh, kind of like my dado plum over here. So, so this, this right here is a dado plane. It's literally just, so, so this is a three quarter inch dado plane. And it's a three quarter inch chisel set in a plane body uh, with a depth stop. And uh, I was convinced I needed this to make dados. Yeah, we'll see what happens. So anyway, I have uh, I've given up on, on tool websites because my budget, my budget and my brain don't get along. So my brain sometimes has this test to have an intervention and say, "Yep, no, we're just gonna we're just gonna not look at this stuff anymore." How, that's how I got into the hand tool woodworking more or less. Was I got obsessed with it over a span of a couple weeks and I started buying shit. And I mean, don't get me wrong, I love it. Glad I did it. But at some point, in there, come on. Choosing, oh, this is a pretty easy choice. All right, so uh, we got two pieces here, and uh, this one's plain, this one is not. But I can see this one's a little more interesting. Uh, we have a knot here, and a knot there, another one there. Uh, so this is gonna be the front, and this is gonna be the bottom. Uh, so that way you can see the, see the knots there. Uh, unless, unless, oh, yep, yeah, no. Past me was wrong and an, and an idiot. Past me was wrong and an idiot. So, uh, to erase that, let's see here. There we go. You know what? Let's, uh, let's play in this. Let's see what's going on. So right now what I'm doing, I'm trying to read the grain. Uh, which I, I don't think this will show up worth a damn. But basically what we have is it goes kind of up and then down and then level and then down and up. So it's a pain in the ass, basically. And this is going this way. The rest of it looks fairly straight on this side. So let's try. So I put it in here. Uh, this over here is telling me that it's going up this way. So if I so I'm planning with the grain here, and then the rest of this is straight. In theory, in theory, oh. Wait, what about when I set stuff places that I don't expect? Alright, 
So what that's telling me so far is we got grain going every which way. Grain going every which way. Yep, 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 yep. All right, I am not, not very good at adjusting wood body planes yet. So I meant to tap this down in, but I hit the iron instead, which, yeah, okay. So if you hit here, here, uh, or here, that's supposed to kind of loosen everything up and bring the plain iron back up. Uh, if you want to go deeper, obviously you hit the top of the plain iron to lock it all, everything all back in, you hit the wedge. Uh, I meant to hit the wedge, but I didn't. But I didn't, and that feels like a super, super deep cut. So, oops. Oh, there we go. All right. So now I have retracted it to where I don't really feel it at all. And that's fine because it's easier. It, it's easier to push the the iron down and it needs to draw it out. Yep, see in there we don't have it. And this is um, wood body wood body planes just glide glide across the wood so easy. And I was actually I was reading a book. Uh, it was a journal from a kid in early 1800s and they were literally uh, settling uh, settling their area to where you know that they had to cut down the trees and pull up the, the stumps ah, son of a bitch too much too much that's fine try again Right. Oh, that might be good. That might be good. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, so they were settling their area. And so his, his dad wanted to make a uh, water powered sawmill. And. Like once, so, so, so part of that is obviously you need a, a big gear to, to turn in the water and that runs various things and then at some point you need gears to transfer motion from one direction to the other uh, or step up the power, step down the power, various things. And they, uh, obviously the, the stuff they had was wood on wood and he said that like when they first got it going it just, it made such a racket. But once it, like once you kind of let it run over the course of a couple of weeks, it would wear into the pattern it was supposed to be, and then it was supposedly as, as quiet as a mouse. Um, and that's where I think, I think my, myself, uh, we have lost so much. Uh, so much of that, in, some of that, that knowledge of the world around us that uh, that people used to have. So what I'm doing right now. So uh, so if you look at this, this thing is set way over here, and I I just I checked checked along the bottom here just to make sure it wasn't a mistake, um, and something something in in here must be set a little goofy. Uh, but this is this appears to be square. Right? Mm. 
All right, so as I kind of figured initially, we got green running every different direction here. Um, this is all basically doing well. We got a little bit of grain reversal going on here, which is fine, whatever. Um, the problem is, once you get over here, once you get on this side of the knot, everything is running the other direction, which is fine. That is fine. That's fine. Uh, and this will be underneath. Try smoother. Ooh, that's it. some band cell marks there which I'm okay with and this is it's a little murky but you know what there we go a couple passes and it looks so much better if I get lucky um, these grain reversals and tear out that kind of stuff will look good if I get lucky. Uh, you know what? I bet that's more talent than luck. If I knew what I was doing. Uh, I'd probably play this correctly. So this side is infinitely more interesting. So now, uh, now with the with a metal body plane, I, I can take shavings as thin as I want to. With a wood body plane, I have a little bit harder time adjusting. This thing is set. Uh, well, at least it was set super fine. I'm going to run it over. And... So I'm just trying to smooth it up a little bit. I think I made this area right here worse, but uh, everything else I didn't really do anything, do a whole lot to. But what wood on wood does, and kind of what I was saying before with uh, with the gears. So when you get them when when you get them run together, the wood will kind of harden itself, um, and you can burnish. The wood to where it makes it just a little bit extra smooth. I'm going to. Ooh, there's some deep. That's fine. There we go. Um, you can use a wood body plane. Take some of your other ones. You guys were on the order. You guys kind of burn our shit. There's a little extra gloss on the wood. 
kind of looks good. Let's see here. I don't know. I don't know which side would you use. This, this side, the grain's doing a little extra, especially down here, doing some extra stuff. This side is a little more contrast on either side, either side of this knot. You know what? I don't have to decide that just yet. All right. So this is the front side. My letters were getting rubbed out a little bit, a little bit. so Sharpie to the rescue. <coughs> All right. Ooh, this is a mess. This is a mess. All right, there's your second line. There's the second line. This happens sometimes. You know what? There we go. Start with fresh slate. Fresh slate. All right, line up the bottoms. Okay. So I can see that this line here, basically the lines that survived, more or less, they're the ones that uh, I need to go off. All right. All right. Um, there we go. So let's, let's make them a bit more prominent. All right, I got the lines that are important. Let's do this. Do this. Ooh, boy. Take that back. All right. Okay. Oh boy. Again, uh, stay away from the drink, kids. That's what happened there. Uh, that's okay. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. All right, now it's twenty seven. Twenty seven turns. You know, it's not an exact science. Ooh, it's not an exact science. Uh, sometimes you're going to push down harder. Sometimes you're going to push down less hard. Twenty-five, which we were through. So, yeah, we were through to the uh, actual cutting action at five there instead of six. So one, two, three, four, six, seven, Now it does, uh, 
does leave some marks on the surface here, but most of the marks it leaves are on the back side. So I'm okay with those. Um, part of the reason why I'm okay with them is it gives futures, future people, a clue as to what is going on, how I made them. The, um, as I said in an earlier video, I don't expect any of this to be perfect. In fact, part of me doesn't even want, the, want it to be perfect. Because to me, perfect is achieved through machines and CNC and, and all of that. I'm using my hands, I'm using tools, I'm making this uh, more or less as quickly as I can. And so, for me, the craftsmanship is in the strength. So I'm making this with the hope that in a hundred years, it's still going strong. And whoever has this at that point is trying to figure out if they want to restore it or if they're okay with it or you know, whatever. See, this is where if you have a festool domino, you'll be okay. You have your rounded edges and... Oh, I do not like festool domino. Uh, to me, it, it breeds lazy. And this is coming from someone who is, is horrifically lazy. Um, anytime you, you automate a part of this process, or you turn it over to a machine, you are immediately not thinking about the wood. And you will see online discussions about wood movement and all these kind of things. Um, and no one ever stops to say, hey, is that joint actually strong? What is tying these two pieces of wood together? So now in this, in this construction, I have two pieces of wood, uh, which only gives me that one spot of uh, potential failure uh, with with a domino. Now you're now you have three three pieces of wood, and you can glue it together all you want, but that glue is going to fail long before the wood does, because that wood it's engineered by by nature to to be flexible, to give, to bend, to ex expand, to contract, and do all these things. The glue, it's it's like coming in here and just saying, all right, we're not going anywhere. Well, if, you know, if you sit there and you move it around, well, shit, that hurts. And eventually it's gonna loosen up and it's gonna break and, uh, and all of that. All right, let's see. One thing I will say, the, uh, I don't remember what it's called. It's kind of a cork type material. And I, I am less than impressed with its ability to to hold on to a piece of wood. Uh, I don't think it's that much better than just bare plywood. Anyway. And so then here, I can take, take advantage of the nature of wood. And I can, so I have fibers that are running this way and I have fibers that are running this way. And then I can, I can take a, another piece of wood and I can run it in between all of that and lock it together. Lock it. So the wood can do whatever it's gonna do. All right, this is done. Uh, I'm gonna do, all right, so 
So this side, it has a little more tear out there, but that, again, that's just that's part of the story of the wood. Uh, this grain here is a little more interesting. Uh, so I'm gonna go with that. And, all right, we have uh, a fair amount of wood to remove here. All right, so it's gonna go like that. We need, And uh, numbering, lettering, that kind of stuff doesn't matter as long as you do not repeat numbers or letters. As long as you don't do that, you're fine. All right, so we need to actually kind of, kind of disappointed. This is a nice square cut tenon. I trust my sawing abilities far more than I do my uh, rebate planning abilities. There we go. That'll do. It's snug, it's tight. Um, yeah. And like I said, at, at some point this will this up here will get cut down to a tenon, so it'll be a small, you know, maybe that much of it or something. Uh, so that should keep this in place. Loud noises, loud noises. Warning, 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 warning. Danger, Will Robinson. All right, there's that. Let's, uh, yeah, the front is this way. So I was trying to put it all together. Uh, I forgot one tiny detail, and that is uh, I haven't I haven't fit the last tenon, which is 
crochet. All right, so if I is going like that, that means we're here. So we have J, J, and these are these are these are happy little presents uh, for future people. For someone who maybe my grandkids, my great grandkids, who knows? Maybe some complete random stranger. They're gonna, they're gonna go through this and see. Hey, that's how we put this together. Or maybe it'll get thrown on a burn pile at some point. Who knows? Who knows? And I have this wonderful habit. Whenever, whenever I do something like that, I always count how many strokes I take. Don't know why. It doesn't. Except at some points, sometimes I stop counting, like I did there. starting to get so one of the things when you are when you're taking a tenon down you can get a little step in this in this corner in here and I was getting that just had to clean it out clean it out chisels chisels are so so important this the uh, the spots that are that are hitting are gonna be uh, shiny they are gonna be shiny they have been burnished so let's take those spots down because I want to get rid of that wood so that way hopefully let's take just a little bit off this edge Starting over here, so I'm not entirely convinced. I'm not a little proud though. Oh, yeah, I'm a little proud there. All right. There we go. Again, you hope you don't take too much off. I mean, this is, as much as I hate to admit it, this is a game of. 64ths of an inch, let alone, let alone uh, 30 seconds or eighths or anything like that. Where you're adjusting, 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 adjusting. Okay. There we go. 
All right, loud noises. Loud noises. And at Cheech, if Cheech down in. All right, so we will take this flippity flip flip. Now, this is all right, it's square. We got a little bit of this, a little bit of that, but at the end, I found, at least in the past, it all kind of cancels out. All right, loud noises. Camera movement incoming. Camera movement. Let's see here. Yeah, that is a box toilet paper right there. That's a box toilet paper. There. That's uh, that's that's what I'm trying to do here to show you. Ah, son of a biscuit. Sure, we're gonna have to trim that down a bit. We've gone, we've gone and done that. Uh, there's a nice little crack in there. Oh, because we have them backwards. Why do we have them backwards? All right. Well, anyway, it is. You know how organized it is. Um, so clearly, missing out on a tape measure is it's a new experience for me. I'll have to do that another day. Um, looks fairly square. Question is, is that the style I want? Is that the style I want? I don't know. We'll see. More to come. All right. Uh, thanks for tuning in. If you've stayed with me this long, you deserve some sort of medal. <laughs>